Badge hey. is coming again. Hi! Welcome. It's uh, After School Anime Club. My name is Max Newland. I'm your host. Um, you know, we're taking it easy today. Chilled out. Uh, it's the end of season two. I've got mm-hmm. two uh, incredible co-hosts with me. First up, it's Max Kostrak. Hello. Oh, I, no, no little <laughs> intro this time. We didn't watch no an episode intro. of anime. That's no, I'm right. just here. I'm human. I didn't watch any anime this week, I just realized. Whoa. But I'm here to talk wow. about a lot of it that we did watch this season. Yes. yes. And then also, next to him on my screen, it's Stevie Matos. Hello. How art thou? I did, in fact, watch anime this week. Oh, what anime did I you watch this week? I finished Scissor 7. I think it's a Chinese anime. Ooh. Ah. It's on Netflix. New to me. It's it's really All cool. Right. It's on Netflix. It's about this guy who loses his memory, and he lives on an island called Chicken Island, and he's a hairdresser. <laughs> Is that real? Yeah. Chicken Island? This wasn't a dream it's... you had? No, I swear to God, it's called Chicken Island. <laughs> <laughs> Don't guess at me. E- e- every sorry, anime sounds like a dream somebody had. <laughs> and it, 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 anytime you try to describe an anime to somebody else. <laughs> It's uh it's really it's actually really funny. Um I recommend either the sub or the dub. Um okay. the the dub acting, the dub voice acting is really great. The sub voice the sub voice acting is actually really interesting because I have oft I don't often watch non-Japanese anime. So it was actually really mm. cool to mm. hear Chinese anime. Um but yeah, it's about this guy who is um he has lost his memory and he becomes a hairstylist. And this is this world where um, assassins are like part of the culture. Ooh. So like he's in a, he is essentially what it is that he slowly discovers that he is, he was an assassin that came from a different Island and like has a hit, uh, has a hit notice out on him, but he oh. like, yeah. So it's really cool. And like his handler is a literal blue chicken named Daibo and it's great. It's a 15 minute, episode scissor seven is a good time it's really scissor cute. seven nice scissor seven Might have to right. check that out good time it's fun really funny so this is a end of season episode i don't have a mm-hmm. game we didn't watch any anime for the show um mm-hmm. we're just here to talk about what how it went you know what season two was like yeah. stuff we liked stuff we uh, en- encountered <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, <laughs> New one trials, we went, oh, trials we endured. Trials we endured. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I feel like okay. If you elephants if, that danced, if you, you know, took if you went on and clicked on the uh, listener survey, you might have noticed something conspicuously absent from the first question. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even put Shin Chan on there. We're not. Because, yeah, you sure did not. <laughs> we didn't want to put that power in your hands, listener. No, no. we're not going to make you, you. You can't make us watch Shin Chan just like you can't make us say chicken head <laughs> shit. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, it, it fucking, we've been doing Anime Club for two seasons now, almost a full calendar year, just about a full calendar year. That's wild. Um, Kind of nuts. Yeah. Um, we have seen a lot of things that are interesting. We've seen a lot of things that are like fun and funny. Um, and I was kind of hoping maybe we could start this thing off with like a conversation about what was, what stood out to us all. Yeah, and can I just real quick before, as we think about what stood out, I just want to run through both for, for my sake and the listeners, this season we watched more Trigun. We watched Tenchi Muyo OVA 2. Yep. We watched Yu Yu Hakusho, we watched Crayon Shin Chan, and we watched uh, The Vision of Escaflone, as well as a few bonus episodes, including Vinland Saga and Ranma One Half and um, uh, Full Metal Alchemist. Alchemist. Yes, Brotherhood, right? So, or was it the uh, original? Yeah. Oh, the original. Not Brotherhood. Okay. okay. Um, so cool. a, a a big fat beautiful uh, uh, season of Anime Club here. Um, Juicy. What stood out here? Man. I gotta say, I something fascinating about Yu Yu Hakusho is that a, a thing that we've talked about a lot this season is the sort of like dichotomy between 90s anime dubs where we're like not quite sure how American audiences are going to react to stuff that's Japanese. And so we're like really heavily Americanizing it, changing names, um, 
like kind of like pointing and laughing at the Japanese-ness of it. And then the the world of the like mid to late 2000s dubs where it's like, okay, American audiences can handle stuff that's from a different culture. We're not going to be weird about it. Like it's, this is Japanese. This is a Japanese show. Everybody knows it. Everybody's okay with it. But I feel like Yu Yu Hakusho was part of the bridge between those two because it was still pretty early. Yeah. Like it's a, it's an early Funimation joint. Like back when the only thing they had was Dragon Ball Z, basically. Right. Yeah. And and, and still the the cast of Yu Yu Hakusho, the direction of Yu Yu Hakusho really played it very straight in a way that I found really surprising, super engaging. Yes, mm-hmm. I loved it. There was not this sort of like it wasn't couching it at all to me. No, it was presenting Yu Yu Hakusho as it, I think, should have been presented. Uh, yeah. Everybody was like throwing a hundred percent into these voice roles. Um, we didn't have a, a, you know, major like sort of Westernization of names. I don't, that I can right. remember. No. Mm-mm. Like we, we had didn't. Botan, no. we had Yu Yu. Yeah. Yeah. Yusuke. And or Yusuke. No, Kuwabara. Nobody was, yeah, Kuwabara. Kuwabara. Nobody was localized in that way. Mm-mm. Nobody Unlike was localized. Unlike Sailor Nobody's... Moon where you have characters like Melvin Melvin. <laughs> Melvin, that famous Melvin. Japanese name, Melvin. Melvin, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Serena. You know, yeah. We didn't. It wasn't super localized, like like Sailor Moon was, or even um, Shin Chan, because Shin Chan was wild. It was very localized outside of Shin Chan, because oh like Max wasn't Max. Bo stayed the same, but that was about it. Um, those kinds of things. So, um, Yu Yu Hakusho was a, was a, not a, a, surprising is not the word I would use not saying it's a bad word I think it was like affirming like it was like a, it was a really it was a hit mm. like it was a really mm-hmm. great like yeah. one of those ones where I was like oh I did not realize that this is like an anime that like I actually want to go back and like watch yeah like yeah, yeah, that yeah. you know because a lot of the a lot of the animes that we cover like with the exception of the ones that like I grew up with Trigun Tenchi, yeah. you know, I'm like, oh, I don't feel the need to go back and revisit this because mm-hmm. I've I've seen it before or something like that. But Yu Yu Hakusho, because I had seen so little of it when I was younger, I was like, oh, this is interesting. I like the structure. I like the Monster of the Week format, a la Sailor Moon, like all this other stuff. I was like, I would actually go back and watch this in my downtime, you know. A hundred percent. I mean, that's what happened to me. I brought uh, Yu Yu Hakusho as my sort of vanity <laughs> pick for season two. Right. And in between, well, when we had our little break in between seasons, I was like, let me go ahead and watch the first few episodes of this so I can start to think about it. And Rachel right. and I sat down and I put two episodes on and I'm like, actually, um, I'm going to watch all of this right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to stop. You right. can't make me stop. I need to see more. Uh, I need to see what Kuwabara does. <laughs> right. <laughs> I need to enter and then remain in the Kuwabara zone. It's been a, it's been a while since an anime really like hooked me that hard, like really mm-hmm. grabbed me by the arm and said and like brought me along for the ride and yeah. uh, absolute delight. Mm-hmm. I feel like this show is really great because I get to have that feeling every once in a while. Like, th- yeah, I, uh, discovery. All, they're like I started the show because I had an interest in some classic animes Mm -hmm. But like I have found I would say I have found three shows in the course of this of this podcast that have hit hit me like that, which is Yu Yu Hakusho, Trigun and um, Vision of Escaflone. Yeah. All three of those hit me like, whoa, I could watch. This is very watchable. This is something I'm very interested in, would love to like keep up with. Once it like I can't believe I missed. Like yeah, the sense yeah. of like, man, uh, if I had watched this when I was this age, it would have blown my entire socks off. Yeah. Right. And right. I'm enjoying it now. Mm-hmm. Wow. This the probably one... would have changed my brain chemistry. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. The one that snatched me up, truly, the one that snatched me up and made me go, damn, I need to go back down this was was Gundam Wing for me. It was absolutely Gundam mm. Wing. And I know that I brought I definitely threw Gundam Wing's hat in the wing in the ring for that. But I was like, oh, I'm just going to like it because this was as, as opposed to Vision of Escaflone, because I have never. Sorry, 
Sorry to those past, present, and future mothers who I'm about to offend with this. I have never been a chick that likes a Stephanie Meyer kind of format. I don't like it when there's a main character that has no substance whatsoever that I'm attended to project <laughs> myself onto. I hate it. I don't like Bella Swan Girls. I can't. So, like, that's why I don't particularly like Hitomi, but I do still fuck with Vision of Escaflone. Probably the U.S. edit where from Foxbox where her ass was not there. But um, <laughs> I loved... I was like, okay, maybe I'm just going to see why I was so boy crazy about the boys in Gundam Wing. And then I was like, oh, wait, no. The thing that made me into Gundam Wing when I was a kid is still the thing that makes me into it as an adult. The political intrigue, Uh all of the B plots, the like really convoluted story that makes you want to get ahead of it. I was like, oh, this is why I'm that bitch that spoils things for myself because I try to figure it out too fast. (laughs) Like, (laughs) you know, like, but I was just like, oh no, like I love the intrigue of this world. I love the politics of it. I love the sense of urgency and the stakes because they're so high, right? Because like it's from, from that first minute, basically. Whoa. Gundam Wing is like life or death. Right. Like, you're going to die today. You're going to die A lot of people today. are going to die, actually. I'm going to die today. Right? Like, oh, life is fleeting in this world. So I really liked that about Gundam Wing, too. And I was like, man, I have to go back and watch this on the break because I am sucked in. It sucked in my partner, too. So I, he's I think further along than I am. That is maybe something that anime has going for it when it comes to, like, children's entertainment. In the Mm -hmm. United States, because I've been thinking about this lately, like anime has violence, it has sex, it has raunchy jokes. Mm -hmm. It's still aimed at like kids and preteens in in its in its native market, where as American cartoons, if it has like raunchy jokes and violence in it, that's going on Adult Swim. That's for 30 year olds like that's your American dad. There is yeah. no teenage American animation, really, yeah. uh, in the same way that no, yeah. Shonen and Shoujo and a lot of it, Japanese anime exist currently. Yeah. And I feel mm-hmm. like there is this, uh, and I, it, I assume it's some executive making a decision in an animation studio saying, we can't neglect the younger audience because we know right. teens are also watching these. <laughs> so we're actually yeah. going to hit everybody. Yeah. I would say the closest we have gotten in American animation and I and I'm coming from a super limited purview with being an adult and not having cable television and not paying for those extra packages on HBO Max and shit. The closest thing I would say would maybe be Adventure Time. And I think that's just completely because the character the person who voiced Finn grew with the character fit. Like he grew up doing that, doing those, like being that character. So they had to grow the show they had to mature that character with him and i think yeah. that's the only one that might be steven universe kind of that's still more like preteen again it's still it's not that full like because yeah. exactly the point you made gundam wing episode one like you've got war i mean with a war. capital w and yeah. and like i said those stakes are Yes, they're established in some of these shows we just discussed, like Adventure mm-hmm. Time, Steven Universe. They get to that level, but it's it's still played in a way that is like, let's make this safe for TV. And in yeah. a way that I feel like this is why this like why anime, when it came over at the time, was so unique and interesting to kids was because sure. it was a teenage focused like sort of like adult themes that was not talking down to them, even if it was yep. silly or weird or different at times, it yep. wasn't mm-hmm. talking down. Completely agree. Yeah. That's yep. the thing. Like, that's why I was like, everything, <laughs> when I was like suggesting, even though she was like question mark, possibly because like, even it's like there. Steven the Univ- elements are like, there. It's yeah. Because like, because you'll have like, as I'm thinking of like Steven universe, will have occasionally not Steven universe venture time. will occasionally have like really, deep episodes about like abandonment and stuff like the ice, sure. like ice king's entire origin story yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. like there's some dark Marcelline, stuff in that show if i there's remember there's some yeah. dark stuff in that show because we because we slowly realize right i mean spoiler alert pff, uh, we slowly realize that the land of fum is actually earth after terrible things have happened to it and so it's just like so we we slowly like as they pull that lens back we get that but we're not presented with that from the jump you have to discover that over time whereas like yeah like you're saying anime is just like here you go yeah and i feel like i I even feel like america did attempt this a few times when Mm -hmm. i think it, it was still neutered when i think like 
Batman animated series. Oh man, like, yeah. That has a lot of darkness to it, but they but they still never they pull killed back. anybody in that show. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Which mm-hmm. was which is wild when you think about the tone of it. And like it, it, this, I think of the Spider-Man animated series from the early '90s, also. Oh yeah, uh, which mm-hmm. got fairly dark, but was still subjected to a level of censorship that we did not see in any of the stuff we watched in right. either of these two seasons. Like, Agree. Spider-Man was not allowed to sh- be shown punching people. Okay, <laughs> like sp- the cops in Spider-Man had laser guns. <laughs> okay, in 1994, wow. the NYPD had laser guns in this show. Wow. I didn't even, huh? Yeah. I didn't know that wow. either. I didn't yeah. know that. I'm really You should fucking... go back and watch this because, hey, listen, there's also a, a side plot where Michael Morbius shows up and he <laughs> he's the living vampire, right? Oh, right. yeah. He drinks blood. He bites people's necks. In the 1994 Spider-Man cartoon, they can't talk about blood. They can't say the word blood. So he is obsessed <laughs> with plasma oh my god get out of here and he doesn't bite people's necks he has little suckers on his hands that when no. he grabs people he like sucks their octopus? plasma out yeah that, that, yeah that is like some four kids one piece yes. level like yes. i hate that i hate that like so much like the gun with the hammer coming out of it in yeah, one it's, piece it's yeah it's truly worse Th- that's another thing they did in one piece which was replace uh like uh metal darts that stabbed into people with suction cup darts that stabbed onto people <laughs> but it's like one piece has violence in it yeah like there and, yeah. and hey look it's a fairly upsetting level of violence sometimes yeah but also it's not it's not like fucking event horizon you know what i mean no. like we're not right. we're not actually showing mutilated human bodies like zoro gets the shit kicked out of him he gets cut up bad things happen to these people but it's so stylized and it's not bru- yeah it's not like and Gundam Wing and and some some of these other ones they do have brutality and things in them but it's not violence for the sake of violence it's violence yeah. for the sake of establishing stakes and talking about real right. world issues and like yeah. actually really showing you know that level of intensity what drives a person to this why why right. What drives a person to 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 suffer through something like this uh, and, and and keep going? And these are interesting questions that people of of many ages can relate to. You don't, yeah. Like, I I think probably like a little kid, like a seven eight year old watching One Piece would be like, I don't really get it. This what is this? <laughs> What's going on right now? But like right. a thirteen year old, a fourteen year old, like they're not. They understand, you know, like kids. Yeah, it's hard being a preteen. It's tough being a kid, and like they know that there is violence and pain in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Like for all the shit that I give Naruto, I will say that Naruto <laughs> does. I mean, look, there was look, Naruto there's, did this for me when I was like, I, no, I Naruto sure. is a, I understand why Naruto like was that bomb for so many people because like it absolutely did that. Like it did. Like I watched it as a whole adult and look, I have not finished Shippuden. It's one of those me situations neither. where if you if you fall off, you're fucked because you can't yeah, remember where the fuck it's you over. are. I'm not, you I'm can't not coming back. back. <laughs> I can't figure it out. Like I fell out in the middle of the fourth ninja war, and I'm so sorry. I done lost the plot. <laughs> I can't. I know that Naruto hugged his angry inner child, unlocked the fox, let the fox you out. You got the further box. than I did. <laughs> I, I got to the point where like dead Hokages got resurrected, and I just I can't remember where I am. The dude who smoked cigarettes is dead, and that fucked me up for a couple of days. I had to put it down for a minute, you know. Is but that the horny guy? I, no, he's the one who who's dating the really cutie, the cutie lady in the in the village, and she's pregnant. And he dies in battle. I don't remember. I, I read Naruto, but I didn't watch oh, it. I think he was Neji's mentor, Neji's team's mentor. I do not remember. I, man, I'm, re- I'm, I'm realizing how little I remember of Naruto right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I read like the first three arcs, I want to say. Like, I really That's did real. not get far. I definitely went further than that, but I, I, I don't know. You didn't get to where Jiraiya died? The pain arc was fucked up. The pain arc was sad. The pain <laughs> arc was sad. The pain arc was sad. And that's what I'm getting to. Where it's like, I give all this shit to Naruto about like the filler and like all this other stuff. Da, da, da. Yeah. But when it talks about the realities of life and the sadness of war and the concept of loss and the concept of abandonment and the con- and like and exploring things like otherness and proving yourself, it's really great it's for that real. preteen to teenage kind of group and that age group because 
you're going through so much. And yes. It's actually, yes. it's really, really relatable. Like, Real talk, I think th- that's like when you might be encountering these things for the first yes, time. Yes, mm-hmm. for you sure. Know? Like, the way Naruto was bullied was fucked up. Like, yes. for oh, sure. Yeah. Like, he was... And to actually kind of address that and talk about it and portray it on scene in a way that isn't... On screen in a way that isn't just... You know, oh, I got bullied and then I t- I stood up for myself and talked about it, and it's done right. by the end of the episode. Like it, it's it a, is, yeah. it's a part yeah. of his character that this is something that happened to him. Right, he is psychologically affected by the fact that people ostracize him for something that has nothing to do with him. Yeah, something that he literally had no control over. Mm-hmm. He is ostracized, othered, and disliked because of it. Which which you can see why that's why he acts out. That's why he has self esteem issues. Da, 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 da. So it's like all of these things where kids can absolutely relate to that you know and i'm just like oh we ain't got nothing like that i mean we might i don't know i don't maybe bluey does this i have no yeah. idea it's okay we but, can forgive naruto for turning into 100 nude girls because he was yes bullied. <laughs> he was, but, <laughs> that was the most white ass thing Kostrak. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> i don't know what kids are like truly i don't know what kids are watching these days like Peppa Pig, I guess. I don't know. Are we out of touch? I, yes, I'm old as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Me and I don't know what the kids are watching these I'm days. I'm 33, man. I don't I'm, know. I'm turning like, 35 this year. I can I'm, feel it. I'm like, I don't even know what kids are doing. Wait, Kostrak, are you the oldest? When do you turn 35? This year. I Me too. So when do you turn 35? Oh, August. Oh, you are the oldest. Sure. <laughs> I am the elder <laughs> anime nerd. You are the oldest because I turned 35 on Halloween. Okay, oh, maybe nice. we should address this right off the bat then. I've got the uh, season two <laughs> listener survey up right now. A uh, very important question was who is baby? <laughs> who is baby? Oh, who let's baby? figure this out. <laughs> who is baby? I've not looked at the final results. Yeah, I kept you guys up to date with, with the results for that for a little while. Do you have a guess of who eventually won out? I have a... T- I have a, f- a feeling deep in my stomach that I'm baby. <laughs> How about you, Stevie? Do you have a guess on I who think won it's, out there? I, I feel as though people were scared to pick me as baby, but I think that once the vote started rolling in, people started picking me as baby, so I will say me. Okay. We're all voting for ourselves. <laughs> yeah, why, why not? So I received 28.6% of the vote. Okay. Stevie, you received 33.3% of the vote. <laughs> Max, 38.1%. You're the baby. <laughs> Which is funny because, as we just mentioned, he is literally the oldest the person oldest. on this podcast. No, but it's it's official. And thank you so much, listeners, for filling out the survey. Yeah, thank you. Now we know. I am baby. You are. He's baby. You are baby. Let's, let's get a clean take. I am baby. Yeah. Uh, so I also uh, asked our listeners what their favorite anime club game was. Yeah. Okay, yeah. What's resonating with folks? Yeah, what's I kind of spoiled that, but it is a uh, band for life. Awesome. Uh, people really love that. What what I was really interested in was like a lot of people were like, I like all the games, but there was also a, a fairly strong contingent of people whose favorite game is when we do trivia. That's awesome. Yeah, well, I, hey, you get to learn some stuff about the anime too. I think it's important right. that we continue to do that on the first episode of a given oh, anime yeah. for sure. Yeah, it's gotta for be. sure. We got to keep that format. I love it too. Also, somebody put N-A, and I'm fascinated by this. Does this mean they're skipping <laughs> the game? Not applicable. I mean, or does hey, that mean look. they don't like the game? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We do give the timestamp for when we're not stopping start. the games. <laughs> no, right. no, no, that's no, not, God, no, no, that's not going God, nowhere. No. no, 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 no. We're keeping the format, so. We're not going to be just a normal anime club podcast. That's never no. happened. No. <laughs> There's Sorry. so fucking many of them. Sorry for you. We got to be unique, Okay. Um, also I asked people, um, what other moonshot shows they were listening to. This is fascinating to me. There is a fairly significant group of people who are found anime club separate from moonshot. Like they don't, they don't listen to any other moonshot content. We're the only huh. show on the network that they listen to. Well, hey, ah. listener, this is your chance. Please go check out some yes. of the awesome kick-ass stuff on moonshot. And by the way, there's another anime show on Moonshot. Like, I don't know if you yeah. know this. If if you're not listening to Okashi, Okashi Nai, you better yeah. go listen to it. Uh, mm-hmm. Because they do, like, they do, if you're watching anime now, yeah. they do yes. modern anime. Yeah, like if we, you. We have, we have limited ourselves to yeah. a specific point in time. Right. Uh, jump into the future with Okashi Nai. 
Right. If you listen to us and then you like know us in person and you're like, oh, my God, why won't you cover Vinland Saga? Why won't you cover Kakagurai or Kakagurai Twin? OK, well, <laughs> we, that's not our shit. Go on over. I mean, we might watch that on our own time, but go on over yeah, to Okashi. We'll get Sabrina. We'll get Sabrina back right. on and she'll watch yeah. Beastars with us or something. We will, we right. will continue oh. to do bonus episodes, but for the yeah. mainline season content, yeah. we got to stick to our school. roots here. Yeah, we got six. And because we got plenty more to get through before we run out of old animes. Truly. In addition to asking people what show they want to come back for season three, I decided to ask some questions about like I I had two separate questions on here. One was what show that we have not watched would you like us to see? And I left that open text entry, you know, write whatever you want. Right. Um, and what do you have a favorite childhood anime you've never heard anyone else talk about? Because I thought both of these would be really interesting to gather information on. Yeah. For sure. And uh, there is stuff in here that I have never heard of and what never seen. What the fuck is that? Like, what's that Zach one that people keep bringing up? Yeah. S- Zatch. Zatch Bell. Zatch Bell is a show that is like a... Okay. <laughs> I'm <laughs> the, the, the pitch yeah. here is that it's like a reverse monster hunter. Oh. Where, like, the monsters hunt you? Yes. No, like literally, yes. Like they, the, the <laughs> monsters are like demons who inhabit the bodies okay. of children. Okay, I've seen this little gremlin before. What the fuck? I've it never seen this. It sounds fascinating. And then there was a couple that I saw on that list of like, what What have you watched that you've never heard anybody talk about that I was like, yo, dude, that's me too. Like Cyborg 009. I don't know if y'all oh, have heard yeah. of Cyborg 009. Yes, I've I heard have. the name, but I've never seen mm-hmm. any of it. Oh my God. I've never so seen good. it, but I've heard of it. Yeah. Oh, it's rad. It's about like a group of cybernetically enhanced humans who are like superhero team, mm-hmm. but it 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 is dealing with questions with the same type of Gundam questions. Oh. Because anytime you have a robot that's shaped like a person, we're going to be asking questions about war. We've already talked yep. about this. Like right. that's exactly what Cyborg Zero Zero Nine does at the same exact time, and it's like a yes. whole ensemble of these guys, which is great. I saw somebody mention also um, Dot Hack Sign. Oh my God, Dot Hack. Yo, Dot Hack, and I was like, Yo, I forgot about that. I feel like people missed Dot Hack, which is crazy because like I missed Dot Hack. Sword Art Online blew up. I was gonna say Dot Hack walks, so Sword Art Online could yeah, run. Yeah, Dot Hack is like, what if Sword Art was cool and interesting right. and unique, and like Sword Art Online <laughs> comes out and it's like nothing like Dot Hack. It's it's literally sad boy MMO anime and like you know whatever like I was just like oh dot hacked walks so sword art could run because I was like I watched it and I was like this is the exact same fucking thing what I loved about dot hack is that it also demonstrated like an understanding of what MMO culture is like yes and, and why people go to MMOs it's the same yes. reason I like there's this game called cross code that Max yes. I'm pretty sure you played it's, <laughs> it, it's the same reason I love cross code which is like this is a thing that is trying to be like an MMORPG and it mm-hmm. actually understands what MMOs are, the what their appeal is. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and right. there was a video game of Dot Hack Sign that did yes, the same was. exact fucking thing where yep. it really felt like you were playing a weird ass old MMORPG, except mm-hmm. there's some, this extra layer of some fucky shit is going on and like there's a mystery that you need to be solving. Right. So it's a cool I show. Was, it it literally cool. does the exact same thing as Sword Art. Like, literally, right. like people are stuck in the game and they're dying. That right. would be an interesting it, one, I think, then for us to cover, knowing that it has a sort of modern, almost equi- equivalent for mm-hmm. us to say, yeah. hey, let's go back and look at this at the time, especially to also compare MMOs from the time to what's happening now. Like the yeah. idea <laughs> of yeah. online communities back when this anime came out compared to online communities now. The game has uh, changed. What were the online communities of the time? We it was I was I was at the it time was, it was like EverQuest. I mean, it was like that it was, was EverQuest. Was it RuneScape? Sure, yeah, RuneScape came uh, around in the nineties. Oh, probably sure. RuneScape. Probably like early early World of Warcraft. Maybe what was the one that was on the Sega? Oh, Fantasy Star. Fantasy Star. Oh my Star. God, Fantasy Star Online. Oh, yeah, on Fantasy the Dreamcast. Star Online on the Dial Dreamcast. Up. I played that. It was cool. I did not understand it at all. Me neither. I now realize yep. it was just a big chat room, but all I really wanted was an MMO that con- – I wanted a game that constantly expanded in space. Um, that's what I wanted. My MMO chat room was MapleStory. I oh, you guys yeah. Maple Story? Oh, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. I played, I played a lot of MapleStory. Whoa. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. Wow. 
Yeah, no. My only two MMOs were World of Warcraft and then Final Fantasy fourteen. I've not played any other. And Fantasy Star, yes. But, like, I've not played any others, really. Mine that I'll someday record a separate thing about and talk about for, like, nine hours is the uh, now defunct and secretly still active somewhere uh, City, City of, of Heroes. Heroes. Fuck. Yeah. City of Heroes. Yes, dude. <gasps> oh, my God. One of the I best MMOs ever created. Oh, man. <laughs> I forgot about City Still of Heroes. Still running tabletop Ooh. games inspired by some of that lore. Yes. Oh, man. Wow. But yes, that would be an interesting one for us. I'm looking. Let's see what else is on this list. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna, I have a question. And oh, yeah. This is gonna, Mew Mew. Mm-hmm. I have a what? question. And it's specifically about that, Stevie. I... <laughs> I've for a very long time thought that Tokyo Mew Mew was a fake anime. Is that is that real? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's real. Yeah. Okay, Tokyo Mew Mew cool. is in fact a real anime. Yes. <laughs> Tokyo Mew Mew is real. All right, yes. all right, all right. I think you can be forgiven for thinking it's fake. It sounds like it something sounds Americans would come fake. up with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure. Tokyo Mew Mew is up there with like Princess Tutu in the names of things that I'm like. I have heard people talk sure? incessantly about, and yeah. it's mm-hmm. like, it sounds not real, but also I've heard that it's like foundational to many people's understanding of what anime is and what it can be. Right, right. Marchin Awakens Romance, Mar. That came up a lot too. Mar came mm, up in the yeah. uh, childhood anime that ne- never heard anyone else talk about, which is kind of, which is interesting. Zach, Zatch Bell came up a lot, and Mar came up a lot. Oh, and Slayers, that's like an 80s God. anime. Yeah, Slayers is an Slayers. 80s anime. Dude, Slayers I kind of want to watch anime. Slayers. Like, Slayers so we would be awesome. We could do Slayers. Sl- Slayers is cool. I mean, um, I liked, and um, G Gundam, I was like, oh man, a G, oh man. Is Roy We've Royer's talked about covering that- G Gundam before. I'm pretty sure we had this conversation last season. Is Ronin Warriors one that has a stinky papa attached to it? No. I don't think That's so. That's Roni Kenshin. That's Roni Kenshin. Yeah, Roni yeah, Kenshin. Oh, yeah. Are talking about a real world stinky grandpa? Yeah, yes, yeah. That's yeah, that's Roni that Kenshin. Boss. That's Roni Kenshin, not Ronin Warriors. It's Roni Kenshin. So, so yeah, most no. animes have a stinky grandpa somewhere in there. Somewhere yeah. in them. I know. I know. So, yes. Ronin Warriors, was that the one that is the like uh, Saint Seiya Knights of the Zodiac, but they've. I, I believe they so. I think. so. I think so. Yeah. That one might be very interesting. Y'all see that they got an, um, an a, a, a live action Knights of the Zodiac yes. film that's like in yes. theaters right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I did see that, and I was I like, "Bro, wait, hold it's on." It's American. It's got yes. Famke Jemsen in it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I was it like, does. "Wait a second, what?" Excuse yes. me. I do remember Ronan Warriors. Yeah. And there's some other really good stuff in here, like Ghost in the Shell. Fuck, dude. Ghost in the Shell's awesome. Yeah. Ghost oh, yeah. Shell. Ghost in the Shell is so, really great. Somebody wrote in here, Cowboy Beep Boop. I did see that, and I was like, okay. Thank you, right, whoever guys. did that. Thanks. Just, just Thanks. a quick shout out. <laughs> um, we got a couple of we got a couple of movies, actually, like Pale Cocoon, okay. um, you know, so those now, kinds of things. I have a plan well, right now. I'm gonna lef- I'm gonna lift the curtain a little bit. We do okay. have plans to watch one movie for season Ooh, three as a bonus, like episode. a bonus. Yeah, yeah. Which is um, what's uh, the, what's the, the what's the choices? What are we doing? Well, what I've already decided upon because this is this was contingent on a guest that I wanted okay. to secure. Right. Was oh, okay. The, okay. Okay. Um, the AB group dub of Dragon Ball Z, which was not available in the United States. Oh, right. Okay. Where they call Piccolo Big Green. Cool. Oh, I'm excited for this. Uh, I've got the the world's strongest, the second DBZ movie lined up oh. for, for us in season three. Oh, okay, yes. okay. So okay. like movies are great. I think movies are super good for bonus episode content. Like they don't yeah. have to edge something out that would be like a, a regular series mm-hmm. for us. Yeah, if we could pull if we that. could pull out like from uh an earlier era like a Satoshi Kon or yeah. an earlier oh, God, Miyazaki, yes. that would be wonderful. <gasps> Yes. Oh my gosh. This is this is related but not related. So first of all, I somehow managed to never had seen Spirited Away. And so I Whoa. got to watch it. I got to watch it a couple of weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago because It's fucking great, right? 
One, yeah. it's great. I love it. It's great and it's sad. And oh my God. But my partner, um, Cowboy fia- Clown Fiance, got to go see the um, live version that had been <gasps> broadcast and put in theaters. So he got to go see. I was so mad because I had to go to show call and it was like at seven o'clock or something in movie theater. So he got to go see like the live version that Damn. got like a pro shot in Japan. Oh, that's so he cool. He got to see like the, re- the recording of the pro shot in like a Regal Cinemas or something. It was very, very cool. Um, I hope people got to see it. I hope I hope it goes to a streaming platform um, because yeah, I didn't yeah, get yeah. to see it. But like they did do the Spirit Away and they had like big puppets and stuff. And um, I saw the clip of the moment where the forest spirit is dirty and they did a really cool method of adapting that for the stage. And it was hmm. it was very awesome where they're all pulling all of the gunk out of the forest I spirit. Said to, <laughs> to pull some of the visuals from that wild movie. <laughs> on, into yeah. anything stage presence has got to be uh, so a trick. Cool. So cool. A true trick. And so he was, he said it was exactly what he wanted and it was very, very cool. And I was That's like, awesome. ah, nice. yes. So I did see it. And now I understand no face and how he's not a good person. <laughs> he's trying by the end of the he's movie. Trying. He's trying. He's trying by the end of the movie, but yes, like no face. And I didn't realize it was a really cool, it's a double thing. It's a coming of age story, but it's a conversation about overdevelopment of land. Yeah, and I was yeah, like, "Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that is." I, I mean, I'm not surprised because many and things, overconsumption and all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, and all of this stuff, and like, I mean, and a lot of Japanese art in general asks a lot of these questions. Like, um, uh, Mura, Murakami, uh, Murakami asks a lot of this in his yeah. work too. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like all of these things asking these big questions about like, oh, how how far does tech- technology need to go, um, versus wh- how far should it go, kind mm. of things like that. So it was cool to know that there was all those other things. But yes, movies, that is not what I would suggest. I mean, I would. Anything old, like Naushika of the Valley of the Wind. Oh my God, that movie's so good. Naushika of the Valley of the Wind. Naushika is a cool fucking movie. Patrick Stewart, New Thurman. I will say, (laughs) for for the future, A Spirited Away wouldn't be a bad idea, specifically because I really like how we use Anime Club to talk about anime as as it was introduced to the West. Yeah. And for uh-huh. a lot of people, like my parents included, like a, a lot of adults in the U S be when spirited away won awards. Yeah. And like, uh-huh. it, be, it, it brought Miyazaki into the um, zeitgeist of American media in a way that right. like, that's the reason why all of these movies are successful now, I think. Right. In, in this market, that. sorry, not right. in general. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree with that because I know that like the the anime heads at the time were like, by time Spirited Away came out, we were all like, oh, finally in this in this mm-hmm. space in the Western media, people space, can see that these this is good. Yeah, Studio Ghibli's finally getting its due because for us, yeah. we were like. Princess Mononoke, Secret of Arietti, Now Should Go to the Valley of the Wind, Porco Rosso, Kiki's Delivery Service, My Neighbor Totoro. And all of those had not gotten much he, not m- much attention until Why Spirited Away. Wide public renown like Spirited Away did. Yeah, it like really, Spirited it was a, it was Away a phenomena. Um, right. So that would be and, and, interesting uh, if we do some some bonus movie episodes. Uh, what else are do we, we thinking How sad our... do we want to be? Because I'm also thinking like maybe Grave of the Fireflies. Because if we want to oh, be like, super so, sad, oh, that would... we can be like really sad. <laughs> Please don't make me get on a podcast and, and crack jokes while talking about <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. My, my tone, I don't think... Matches you can't that. joke about Grave of the Fireflies. Um, no. Um, you know what we should if we want to make jokes? You know what's an easy softball for jokes? The fucking the fucking what's that fucking terrible oh god, that movie Feel my brain. Know what I want to make fun of. The we'll other robot movie that's sad. Cruel Angels Thesis movie. Oh my god. Are you talking about Evangelion? <laughs> Evangelion, the movie Evangelion though? Bro, okay. Now, I have not seen all of the Evangelion series. I have not seen all of Evangelion. It's I know, so weird. I know. Newland, my Newland, big yeah. anime. So no. This is a, this is a, a gap sin. we have on the podcast. It's yeah. not a sin. I don't know whether you're blessed or cursed. I, I'm blurst. You're a little blurst. It's. I'm not going to tell you to watch it. But if you watch it, I'm here for you. I know I'm the general outline, you. and I also yeah. know that like the movies kind <laughs> so. of like. The movies kind of work toward a happy ending. Happy trying to clean ending. it up, from what I yeah. understand, and and then do it six or seven times. Yeah, yeah. 
it's very much like what they had to do for the for the Firefly movie. You know, like they had to they had to tie up the loose ends kind of thing. So it's 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 weird. But, you know, we could do that. So we can have a what the fuck. No. <laughs> um, I wonder anyway. if now would be a good time to start talking about what our vanity picks for season three are going to be. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and 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 yeah. break into that. Um, Absolutely. Ha- have you two decided what yours are? How many did I have oh, yeah. to have? Because I, I, I finally it. landed on one. I think. I mean, I've got, I've got one. I know I have one. So. Me too. Okay. I'm so strong in mine. Okay, let's Let, go. Oh, let's hear it then. If you're let's so confident, I want to hear it first. People know ours, so we don't know yours, Newland. It's Mobile Fighter G Gundam. Yo, yes. Oh, we're getting some robots. Yo, yes. Mobile Fighter G Gundam is that bitch. What do you Her. guys know about G Gundam? Nothing. I know literally nothing. Mobile Fighter G Gundam, is that, didn't we mention this one before? Yeah, you've, We've it, talked it's been about teased it. to me before, I think. This is the one where he fights in the little room. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. 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 Um, yes. I find yes, a little yes, room yes. every day in my life working from home. <laughs> it's it, it's like what if Gundam was stupid? It's like what if Gundam was like the most meat headed shit. It deserves you've ever seen? it. Let Gundam be stupid. Gundam I can't stupid. wait for this. Like, yeah. It's Gundams piloted by himbos who can throw roundhouse kicks. It's great. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's great. an incredible TV show. It's so Are over you sure the that's top. not just a studio trigger uh mecha anime? <laughs> I mean, truly. The thing about G Gundam is that it is to me like those. It's like a a a a a, a wushu B movie, but it's an anime. Oh, I'm very excited hearing all of these words strung together. It's <laughs> and very the dub good. is is that same quality where it's like. Yep. This was during that period where we were a little bit ashamed of how Japanese this stuff is, but like they started playing it straight and. Mm-hmm. I don't know what studio did this. I don't know if I've ever heard these voice actors again, but man, like the main character is this big, stupid idiot. <laughs> he wears a scarf and a headband. He's yeah, so man. He's so, his name is Domo Nkashu and he yeah. is like, oh God. Okay. I almost, <laughs> do, I almost want to tell you the premise, but like they, they play the premise like it's um, a, a secret. Yeah. Oh. Um, which is really hilarious because I watched the first six episodes again, and they form a very tight little arc. Oh, perfect. Okay. Then that that is a a great little sampler for us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And so it is just I don't know. There, so many Gundam shows tackle this sensitive question of what is the nature of conflict? How do we how do we treat people who go to war for us? G yeah. Gundam is really not that at all. <laughs> We're not here for that. There are plenty of shows that have covered that. It's time yeah. for us to get strong and fight. Oh, oh, yeah. absolutely! Like it's like it's 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 battle bots. Like it's rock yeah, and talk yeah. robots. It's like Dragon Ball Z, but Gundam. Yes, that's literally what it is. Because it's it's like, a, like I'm, a I'm not already to get to getting very th- hyped to watch this. There's people. There, there are listeners pumping their fists right now. Oh like, yes. Yeah, the whole thing is it's it's Gundam Battle Royale. That's what it is. Yes, exactly. Yes, it's Gundam Battle Royale. So yeah. it's gonna be it's oh it's it's a good time. It's a good it show. It's a good time. It is a good time. I like G Gundam a lot. So, all right, who's next? Stevie, what do you got? Okay, so I have been chastened from season <laughs> two. <laughs> I have learned the error of my ways. I have understood. <laughs> I understand that I have power and I don't know what to do with it being, you know, a, a historically oppressed class. Um, So with that, um, I am going to have some responsibility and I'm going to give us some vibes. Okay. I'm going to go with Samurai Shampoo. All right. Oh, I'm going to give us yeah. a Watanabe. I'm going to give us a Watanabe and I'm going to let us revisit the vibes, the hip hop feudal Japan vibes of Samurai Shampoo. Lovely patterns, Pretty this one came on Adult tablos. Swim, I think, didn't it? Yes, yep. it did. I think that's where I saw it. Mm-hmm. And I remember this one also. I was a little late to Cowboy Bebop, and I enjoyed mm-hmm. it. But I remember this one sort of watching it, I think, as it was debuted yes. here in the U.S. and being like, yes. I get what you're putting down here. Okay. It's, 
and it's gorgeous because it's about these it's about these people who meet under just like not extraordinary circumstances. It's just like a, a, three people are thrust together because of just like fate, essentially. And they all kind of wind up having a goal that aligns where they all need to get to the same yeah. place. Um, very similar to Bebop, where it's these three people who decide that helping each other is more profitable for themselves individually than being working yeah, independently. It's a, it, it's a, it's a gang of, so, of sort of almost plucky adventure, like yeah. of, of disparate people coming together mm-hmm. and going through a series of like vignettes and and there is an overarching story that ties everything together but really it's more about this setting than anything else and the vibes because and the vibes because it's feudal japan and yeah because cowboy bebop space jazz yes samurai champloo is edo period japan hip-hop and it's yes. like, yo, and it's okay. So pretty. I've never seen it's, it. I've never oh, seen you've it. You've never seen it? Oh, I've never oh. seen it's a treat. It's going to be it's a, treat. a joy for me. It's so good. I'm looking at the cast list on Dubbing Wiki. The legendary Steve Bloom. Yeah. Oh. The one, the only. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can't. Like, it's so good. Like, uh, I don't think we're going to get to it, but the the whole episode when the Dutch man comes to Japan for the first time, and he's a oh, tall, I blonde motherfucker, this. and he's just like, just absolutely entranced with japonaise like oh man it's so cool like it's just a bunch of vignettes and like i think what i like about samurai champloo is that it is there is that overarching art there's that there is a through line there is a there is a goal but it focuses on these people individually and how they came to be where they are and i really do like shows that explore characters and that's a big thing of what samurai champloo does so Mm -hmm. um also because of the way that american media was they they might have taken episodes out so I don't know if we got to see the whole series, but who knows? I think it was pretty accurate when it when it aired because I, I I ended Maybe. up owning a box set of this one, okay. and it it is very much like Cowboy Bebop. I think it's a twenty six episode run, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. A, a very like very it's structured almost exactly the same. If yes, I remember it's correctly, just, it's literally I, just in a separate time period. This is somewhere I, else. Yeah, I'll go ahead and say I'm really interested for us to have this conversation of. How is this show structured compared to some yeah. of the other ones we have watched? A Yu Yu Hakusho, a Sailor Moon, mm-hmm. a Trigun mm-hmm. even. There's some similarities right. there with Trigun that I think we'll really get to to dive into. Mm. For sure. Um, mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Yes. Yeah, I okay, wasn't Max, gonna give us yours? a curse selection All right. this time. This is this yeah. is where I uh, I'm I'm very glad some listeners suggested this one as well because I've had it ready to go for a while and I wanted us to get a couple seasons deep but we're gonna watch Fooly Cooly we're gonna do it yes dude fuck yes (sighs) we can watch the whole fucking show we can watch the whole show it's built for this podcast because it's six episodes can I tell you all six episodes (sighs) this is the anime that like grabbed me by my lapels and slammed me against the wall and was like check Uh this shit out (laughs) and changed my brain chemistry and I'm honestly a little, it's been a very long time since I've gone back to revisit it. And I'm worried about certain things and how they will have aged compared I to when I you, watched this as a I teen. Love, so, Fully Cooly oh is boy. the best. It's such a good coming of age story. Yes. It's yes, an incredible yes. Still TV love the music show. to this day in that one, too. I own the fucking CDs, the, the fucking pillows. pillows? Come yeah. On. It is a it is a three hour, it is a six episode uh, music video, and it yes. rules. <laughs> So yes. here's another, oh. I have a gap here. Hmm. I read the manga. I have not seen the anime. <gasps> the manga is not anything similar. Like the anime. I mean, it no, is really? a, yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, the anime is, uh, is its own beast. It is, it, okay. it almost feels like, like a little bit of like proto studio trigger in the sense that it is, it is so animated and wild and moment to moment. And, and just, yes. it's a, it's a, it's a Looney Tunes like nightmare uh, okay. <laughs> at times. <laughs> like it so is, good. you're, you're in for a ride. I loved the manga as a kid. I've read it when I was like 13. I want to say yeah. the, the manga is yeah. good. Uh, good. The anime is something. It's wild. I would say if anything, if anything is going to get more pronounced in giving us an ook and an ick, it's going to be, that through line between the main character and the mm. alien mm. and the, the dad making the comments about it. That's going to be yeah, the, the only da- thing. Was- the dad stuff is going to be rough. I'll just go ahead and say that there's a, there's an, there's definitely an icky grandpa. 
there's an icky grandpa. He was ooky back then. He's going to be ookier now. Like, that's going to be the worst part of it. But, oh, God, it's vibes. The inspector with the big eyebrows. I'm so ready to see the inspector with the big eyebrows the, again. Some, of the, some of the cultural, um, American cultural references <laughs> that, ja- yes! that that is made in a Japanese anime is going to blow your socks off, Newland. <laughs> there is, there is, I don't want to spoil it, but I know that there is a specific reference to some American TV that is like, Yes. What the fuck? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I never ever wanted a scooter until I saw a Vespa. This oh anime. yeah. I never Ooh. wanted a Vespa until I saw like this and Amelie were like my entire aesthetic in middle school. The French movie Amelie. <laughs> she's kind of like naughty Amelie, right? Like she's kind of yes. like mean <laughs> Amelie. Yes. I, I hate like this. <laughs> It's like, what if Amelie ran around sexually awakening people and hitting them with a bass guitar? You know? Yeah, essentially, yeah. Like, what if Amelie was a huge bitch? Like, naughty Let's Amelie go. might be the title <laughs> of the... <laughs> Here it is, y'all. Here's the title. Here it is. So that's, yes, fully cool. Okay. Let's okay. go. This is a solid set of three. What is yeah. our, what is is our so audience good. pick? Like, what is, yes. okay. if we come back to the, the poll? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So the when we did the poll, there were there was a three way tie for number one, and it was with a bullet, y'all. Like these three were head and shoulders above everything else. It was Tenchi, okay. Trigun, and Yu Yu oh. Hakusho. Damn, yeah. I they was surprised really liked to Tenchi see Tenchi like that. Yeah, I, th- I think they might have liked us to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> with that second one. No, but we also have very good conversations around Tenchi. Right, we if did. If they voted for Tenchi again, I would have steered it in the direction of what Toonami did, which was put Tenchi Universe on Universe. next. Universe, yeah. yeah which yeah. is a good show. So I, I went Again, I went yeah. back and watched that one, and I was like, this is really good. Yes. So they all tied, so I had to post a runoff poll. Mm-hmm. Tenchi got zero votes in the runoff <gasps> poll. <gasps> what? Wow. What, those Tenchi yeah. fans dipped in and dipped out. Yeah. They sure did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the Tenchi mm-hmm. fans saw that when it was between Tenchi Trigon and Yu Yu Hakusho, Tenchi's yeah. a distant third. Yeah. Ah, I see. That's valid. It, it, in that first one, you could select multiple, couldn't you? People were picking yes. their top three. Yes. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it was really, really close between Trigon and Yu Yu Hakusho. Okay. But I think the stampede bump and the, oh, yeah. the Biggelus Dickelus bump has Biggles, gotten us to <laughs> grab Twitter by the fucking let's, neck let's, and Let's all send a tweet to Biggelus Dickelus Wolfwood. Thank you, I would Biggles, like to Diculous. thank Biggelus Dickelus Wolfwood yeah, for I'm, edging I'm Trigun out. I'm being coy, but it's Trigun. Yeah, it's we're, Trigun. We're going to be fucking yes. watching Trigun okay. in season two. So excited about that. <laughs> I I like. I would have loved to watch Tenchi, like for real, would have loved to watch Tenchi, yeah. but I We've am so come excited. Back. We're not done with Tenchi. I no, it can't be. We need to know. We need to know. We we left it such a cliffhanger. We've got to know. So. Uh, well, the thing is, Universe, just the first few episodes rehash the plot. It's a reboot. Of the first ones. But, yeah, 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 yeah. like, make it more interesting and, like, yeah. like, the first episode introduces Ryoko and Mihoshi. That's Weird it. combination, but there you okay. go. Okay. <laughs> They're the first two that land on Earth. Um, Aika doesn't show up until later. Uh, but, yeah, we're going to be watching Trigon. I'm so psyched about that. Fuck We'd love yeah, to watch go. more Trigun. Oh, Great TV good. show. Mm-hmm. Well, just what a good show. I'm just so excited to, to watch that. This is yeah. going to be a good season. It's going to be a really good we've season. Got, we've this got is going to be a good season. We have the unenviable task of picking the uh, audience wild card oh, from gosh, this okay. extra list, which has been so hard. Like We've talked about a lot of these things. I mean, mm-hmm. there's stuff that's jumping out to me like um, Zatch Bell would be so fascinating. I also saw Metabots on there and... Whoa! I don't know if y'all see saw Metabots, but that's an no. interesting show. Wow, Metabots! Meta- I've heard of it. Metabots. Um, Metabots. Metabots was a unique anime because it had a character that was <gasps> voiced by a black voice actor, and he was one of the main characters of the show. And that did not happen a lot in, a, no, in, in American huh. English dubs. Meta B was voiced by one of the most prominent early black actors in anime dubbing. Yeah, and like he didn't. I mean, he didn't hold. He didn't hold back. Like they, re- they let him be himself and bring himself to the role, in a way that like is fascinating to me because it's a it's a weird time period for both of these things. I remember Metabots. Many Metabots was Robot Digimon. Yes, exactly. 
I'm looking oh at a picture of it, and you have just hit the nail you on the head with that description. Robot Digimon. I remember this. Whoa. It's an interesting show. Uh, I have very strong memories of being a little kid homesick from school watching Metabots. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, also, I'm looking at stuff like, uh, what was the other thing? Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, I, I just looked up Metabots. This is... um. It's a Japanese role-playing video game franchise that Mm -hmm. was adapted into an anime television series. Yep. Whoa! I did not know that. That's Yeah, it was a Game Boy title. Whoa! Oh, that's why all I can see, the first thing that comes up when I look it up is just like every Game Boy Advance title that has ever, ever existed. Um, That was a thing. Metabots, I was like, oh, snap. Um, I don't know what, Zach, Zach, are you looking at the favorite title of anime? Zach. Yeah, Zach Bell. I'm yeah. going to call it Zach Bell. You better get over it now. <laughs> Zach I'm going to call it Zach, Zach Bell. So many people think Revolutionary Girl Utena came up a lot, too. Ooh, man. Revolutionary Girl that. Utena. That came up a lot, too. Uh, yeah, Captain I'm seeing Sakura multiple um, instances of it in here. Mm-hmm. That That's one came four. up a lot. Um, so that one came up a couple of times. Uh, Car Captain Secura came up. Fruits Basket came up. Inuyasha, Inuyasha comes up every Man. every time. Inuyasha comes up every time, and we That's know true. that. Look, Inuyasha is a black anime. I did not know this. Mm-hmm. And then anytime I run into like a blurred, and I'm like, I do an anime podcast. They're like, Have you covered Inuyasha? And I'm like, Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> like, uh, okay. Like, I was like, really? I didn't know Inuyasha Shit, you're, was... You're moving the needle for me. Yeah. Inuyasha. Inuyasha was because for especially the culture the, like that. It was almost one of my one of my picks for this season. I, I wouldn't Same. mind us doing it. We had more than one review of the podcast that was like, you got to watch Inuyasha. I know you're not going to, but you got to watch Inuyasha. Let's right. let those reviewers have the stronger vote here uh, as we continue to, right. to to pressure people to, to go and leave us a review. <laughs> hey, listen. I'm okay calling it for Inuyasha, folks. Let's do it. Let's fucking watch Inuyasha. This is going to be... I'm so hyped for the season right now. What a season we got planned. This is going to be a good one. Oh, my God. (laughs) Okay, so we got um, Trigun, G Gundam, Samurai Champloo, Fooly Cooly, Inuyasha. Do we want to go that order? Do we want to do the same thing we did last last season? What we did was audience pick, Newland... Costrack, Newland Stevie Costrack. Okay. Uh wild card. Fine. I'm down. I'm good with that. I'm good with whatever. I'm good with All right. That. Let's mm-hmm. do it. Actually, we mm-hmm. did Newland Costrack Stevie wild card. It's whatever. That's right, hey. we did. What, whatever's we go, good. We Let's go em. with that. Let's go with that again. Okay. We got a season, season That's three wonderful. anime club coming soon. Woo! We didn't talk about this, guys, you and me. I think it would be good to take a little time off. Yeah, we'll take we, we, quick break. Mima is tired. Mima is sleepy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stevie, Mima's you've been sleepy. fucking through it these past month or <laughs> yes. so. Mima is so tired. This I'm, Mima I'm is definitely the not going to be using this time to play a bunch of Zelda. So <laughs> yeah, also Zelda came out, and Zelda you know, came out, like, we gotta give time for that. <laughs> some of us, some of us, our partners are having to be very understanding in this time. For they are essentially writing to us from the field as we are in Hyrule, like you know, like that's the writing thing. to us from Hyrule Field, yeah. Writing uh, yeah. to us from Hyrule Field. Look, Mima has been the reason why the schedule's been a mess these last like three episodes. Like, look, we tied. We're tired. We are not gain. We are not all. We are tied. And also, the other thing is, I want to, I want to be clear about like the fact that. I got a special guest for every episode this season, and yeah, I didn't did. know if I could do that. And I Woo. don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. Like, I don't think that's a sustainable thing to hold myself. I don't to think for the it should be show. either. I, th- no. I, I think um, uh, let's let's make our guests special. I love yeah. the ideas of more guests in bonus episodes. Yes, mm-hmm. maybe bonus at least if we can get be one guest for. Sure. Per- Per, per show, sure. I think would for be sure. wonderful. But um, you know, it's wonderful just to hang out with you two sometimes too. Yes, absolutely. Right. This has oh, been a fun yeah. episode. It was fun the first season when it was just the three of us, and it'll continue yes. to be fun in season for three. Sure. Yeah, I think I think I love. I think it was cool that we got, to, especially because we got to meet so many people from other podcasts from the Moonshot Network, yeah. and a couple yeah. of people who weren't on the pod on the Moonshot Network at all. Like shout out, you know. 
to um, Chad a couple Kelly. Of, yeah, Chad yeah. Kelly. You know, like that was really dope. It's a wonderful um, guest this season. Like, if we could we reflect did. back on that for a minute, we re- yeah. like oh, what on. a wonderful host of people who were all a delight. The Manicula? And I discovered that was a like great five new podcasts from it. That I, no, I know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. got so many cool. We got the maniculum on here. We got hyperfixation. We got Milf Manor. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, we, got, like we got so many. We are people. recording this on Mother's Day. Very uh, yes, applicable. Yes, we are <laughs> so applicable. Like, we got some really cool people. But like, I didn't. I'm not. I don't want to say. But and I think that it's really dope that if we like this season for definitely for bonus episodes, bring in bonus people for the bonus episodes. Yeah. Um. Because yeah. it's just like I mean, look, look, Newland again. I say it like every other episode. The amount of work you put in is like to be commendable. Snaps. I'm running around. You I'm are running right. around. He's for this putting show. the work in, everybody. He's putting the work in, and we're just showing up and getting drunk and being gremlins. Okay, yeah. like it's really, yeah. We <laughs> also, hey, hard I, time. I'm putting this invitation out there. If either of y'all come up with a game that you want to play and host, that's acceptable let's do to it. me. Stevie and I, I let's let's uh, let's each. Come up with a game in season I, in season three I for sure. Try. I'm I will fi- try. I'm already fi- the gears are turning. I don't uh, know how. I will figure it out. I didn't know okay. how to do it either. Uh, then I just I put myself in a position where I had to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I will figure it out. I will figure it out. Okay. So, <sighs> oh, I have an idea about a game. Okay. Just it's got to be like I got to figure out how to make it. But my brain went anime memes. Anime memes. Yeah, like a game that requires you to like uh, maybe identify the anime from the meme. Oh shit! Okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I think there's a lot to work with there. Sure, there's, there's a so lot much to work, to work with. with there. There's so much to work with there. I don't know. Anyway, I'll figure it out. Anyway, I may delve uh, deeper into the fan fiction realm. I... That's a that's a deep <laughs> well to pull from. <laughs> but I'll share my uh, anime music videos login with you guys. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right, it's, I, that, I think that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. like yep. I'm ready to we're go. Good. I, we're, we got season three planned out. We are ready to go. I'm really glad that you listened to this episode. It's it's mm-hmm. always fun to make these. It's weird to say it's always fun to make these when this is our second time making one, but it is fun to make these. They are. They are very enjoyable. They are. And a I good hope time. you enjoyed it, listener. Yeah. I hope you had a good time. Keep an eye out. I want to say, like, let's say I want to take like a week or two off. Okay. Probably not too much more than that. I know that's what we said last time, and then we ended up taking like a couple of months off. <laughs> but like, month? I don't think that's going to be too time. much of an issue. Yeah, <laughs> no, I don't no, think no, we're going to no, do that this time. time. Um, but yeah, once once I get like some idea of what our guest situation is going to be like, because I think I want to kick it off with a bonus season okay. three. Yeah. Uh, okay. Once I get an idea of what the guest situation is going to be like, I will post um, on the Anime Club Twitter. Because if you don't post on Twitter every thirty days, your account's going to get deleted. These yeah, now. what the cool, shit cool is that? Cool fucking website. I never post Jesus on Twitter, Christ. so mine's gonna get deleted. Yours is gonna go 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 away. No more max attacks. Please give us a blue sky invite. Please, God, somebody I'm out really, there. If please, anybody got one, on. please, I'll take it. I want to go. So, I want to go somewhere I know, else. If you're listening to this, I know you're on there, bud. It feels like we're all on a big iceberg, and and a helicopter keeps showing up and taking people away, and and we're just waiting. Truly, like I, I'm trying. I will figure out co-host. I guess. I'm okay. actually back on Tumblr. No, Ghost like, is good. Ghost is good. Wait, I just, is I like, just gotta... What if we all got and just stayed on Tumblr? This is a, a Tumblr-only <laughs> podcast. I mean, I do it. Because I've been obsessed with Bridgerton, Tumblr is the place for me to go for, like, Bridgerton aesthetic. <laughs> yeah, you gotta <laughs> like, go. Fu- yeah. I, look, fuck you. The gift sets have been flawless. They've been impeccable. They've had two all seasons my to do this. All of the babies give me so many good Queen Charlotte gift sets, and I thank y'all. I thank you. Uh, and we thank you. Yes. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for thank listening. Thank you for listening. I don't have anything else to say. Go Moonshot. No. We may or may not have an episode out by the time it happens, because so Moon Carnival. Yeah, end of right, this month. Moon Carnival. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to be a fundraiser for Trans Lifeline, Twitch.tv slash Moonshot Network, starting on May twenty yep. fourth. Very I important. Say. Go watch. Go donate. May yeah, twenty sixth is when that's starting. Oh yeah. come on! That's literally Memorial Day weekend. If you work yes. in an office, you ain't got shit to do that weekend. Yeah. You better fucking get on Twitch. If you got Memorial <laughs> Memorial Day weekend, get on Twitch. Moonshot Twitch.tv slash Moonshot Network. Also, uh, Moonshot dot mm-hmm. uh, We secured that bag. Uh, yeah. yeah. Donate to Trans Lifeline. It, it it's a great purse. time to. 
Open your purse. Open your purse. Open your purse. It's important. It's important. Open important. your purse. You nerds. You nerds. I know you got money. Fucking nerds. Nerds always got money. <laughs> our our nerds super rich money. listener base. Yeah. Hey. Uh, extremely wealthy. We got a lot of one percenters in here. That's the other thing I asked. What's your yeah. income? <laughs> <laughs> you have to be in a certain tax bracket to ride this ride, baby. We, we will be soliciting you for major gift donations. Give <laughs> me your returns. I want to see your 2022 uh, tax return. I don't do wanna, actually. Do y'all want to plug anything? Do y'all want to, you know, plug yeah. anything on the internet? No? Mm-mm. All right. Cool. Um, I got some, I did some audio books. You can buy those. Go to you Max sure Newland, did. Go to you at Max Newland underscore on Twitter. I'm promoting, I'm promoting those every once in a you while. Did Hell like yeah. Five. You did so many. I have actually completed seven audiobooks. Jesus Hell Christ, yes. Newland. <laughs> which has been fun. I've been, been enjoying awesome. it. Anyway, uh, you know, we're Anime Club. If you want to write us a review, that would be great. If you want to tell your friends, that would be super great. If you want to listen to other shows on the Moonshot Network, that would be probably even better. Yeah. Uh, and as we say at the end of every week, we're so glad you could spend this time with us. Thank you for listening. And we'll see you at the next season of <gasps> Anime Club. Dun dun. Dun dun. Woo-hoo. Dick dun, Wolf. Dun 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 <laughs> dun. Dun dun. <laughs> Let's, um, uh, let's get this on the road. Let's sync let's this, this podcast sh- up again. Um, let's do this again. Boarding. All right. Let me time get time about this again. Hold I'm on. ready. All right. I'm, yeah, let's go. Okay. Let's do 10 seconds. Okay. I won't burp into my hands again. <laughs> Wait. 10 seconds. Wait. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> do we do 18? No. Okay, let's, let's do 25. No. 25. Wait, What? It, 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 hold on, I think I have to refresh. Seconds. Is time dot is wrong? Time dot e, sorry, time dot is was wrong. Whoa, what? that's Holy why shit. I was like so fucked up. It was it, it, it was completely wrong. I guess when I refreshed the it, pale. it pulled up a cash version or something. Okay, oh, now okay. I am fucking ready. Let's do this. Okay, okay, okay. Forty seven. <laughs> there okay. it is. Yeah. Okay. Folks, if time dot is is wrong, I feel like <laughs> that fucked me up. That really fucked me up. That is I think it was my end. I think it's because I restarted. Chrome pulled it up, and who knows? I feel like if time dot is is wrong, then Gondor has fallen. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
<laughs> what can I the trust? Dooms, the doomsday <laughs> clock is in fact tolling. Time dot is no longer works. Like, <laughs> end of days shit. Man. End of days. Here you go. The sky is the meteors coming down from the sky. The end days are here. The dynamis has infected the world. You're welcome. Oh, yeah, time oh, dot is totally fuck. sold out. It says it's beer o'clock. Damn. Oh Damn. no. The dynamis has infected the world. Time dot is broken. <laughs> Do you ever feel like the earth is just so boring? Well, let's go to the moon. That's right. The Moonshot Podcast Network is celebrating with its springtime stream for charity, the Moon Carnival, on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, May 26th through the 28th. We've got Hades. We've got Hitman! We've got Hot Wheels! We've got a good time ready for you! For a good cause for Trans Lifeline this Memorial Day weekend at twitch.tv slash moonshotnetwork. <laughs> 